uh, not only Bishop, but his lovely wife, who has been a jewel. She wants to know, is everything all right? She, Sister James, also is a beautiful person. Let's receive our leader. Let everybody say amen. In your arms and put somebody in those arms and say, I love you with the Lord's love. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Just touch your neighbor on that right shoulder and say, neighbor, you are loved. They may not believe it, but to say it again, neighbor, it makes no difference. If you don't believe it, you're still loved. Hallelujah! Glory. God bless you. We would like to honor everybody that's due honor. If I start calling names, I will miss somebody. But believe me, believe me, we're glad for each one of you. And we're highly favored to have you to come this night. All the people from Michigan, and there's so many of them here. So many of them. This wonderful choir. Yeah. So many of you, we haven't got time to talk about you tonight. But I'm going to talk about you for it's over with. All the great pastors that are here from Ohio and Michigan and Indiana and you name it. The important thing is that God is here. Thank you, Jesus. We're about 10 minutes late, but I'm sure the Lord will forgive us. Tonight we are highly honored. And we are favored of God to have our leader here. Our presiding bishop. Bishop Owen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. In Ohio, he is much loved because he's from Alabama. And our great leader, Bishop Williams, was from Alabama too. 
and Bishop Williams is the reason for so many young people making the grade. He appointed me when I was 23 years old as a district superintendent. And I didn't know what to, what, how to even act. I hadn't been a district person before. I didn't know how they acted. I soon found out, though. Yes. I had, to, I had to get me a special seat. Yeah, a special seat. Look for special honor. They, these positions ruin you. The only seat you have is what God gave you. Sometimes it, it expands and sometimes it doesn't do that. But the Lord is here. It's been a great, great meeting. And our bishop took time out of his busy schedule to come by this little place called Toledo, Ohio. And we are glad for him. In Ohio, he needs no security guards because we all are security guards. He can relax and be himself in Ohio because we love him and we'll do him no harm. We pray for him. Hallelujah! Let's intercede for him now. My God! Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We adore you, Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus.
lifted up tonight. Oh, we do, we do. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Chandler David Owen, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ everywhere. Our hands up, receive this leader and our friend and our great companion, the Lord, by saying, Hallelujah! God bless to Bishop William James and to his lovely wife and to all of these wonderful pastors from Michigan, my friends, Brother Ginyard in the audience and others that we've noticed to are here and all the wonderful ladies. <clears throat> I'm delighted to be present here with you. I have just about received mine few minutes ago when the bishop was praying for me I uh, praise the Lord I uh, the presence of the Lord and I want to thank you for your prayers and my dear 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 friend I suppose we've been friends uh, longer than almost anybody in the church uh, in our category each of us was a boy preacher and he was Riley Williams preacher in the north and I was Riley Williams preacher in the south and um, Riley Williams got us together when he was a teenager and I was a teenager and uh, that friendship has lasted God has blessed this young man extraordinarily he's a saved person And all of the bishops in our church look up to him with respect and great honor because he is deserved. 
anybody that can get this many people together for the purpose of just magnifying God. You have to reckon with them and pray for them because everybody don't get you together for that kind of purpose. Y'all are not going to talk to me? Of course. Yeah. But uh, this is for no other purpose than to enhance our spiritual maturity. And that is wonderful. We pray for the bishop also. That the Lord would continue to give him good health. <clears throat> and long life. Because you don't find these kind of men every day. When he asked me to come, I've been traveling over the church. And uh, I guess you can tell I'm terribly hoarse and can hardly project. But uh, I just wanted to come here to be a part of the latter rain. I, I, I figured that if I could just get here. <laughs> that I would be spiritually infused and energized. And the Lord has done just that. <clears throat> God has given me a little method for the deliverance of his people. And even before I start, uh, if there's anyone here that wants to be delivered or need to be delivered, just stand, let me see you. Yes. There's one, two. Only two people that needs to be delivered. There are no sick folk here, no folk with tumors, cancer. Then the rest of y'all are well. You don't need the Lord. You, you don't need to be blessed. You don't need. I need to be blessed. I, I need you to stand up here so I can. <laughs> you may be seated. I want to talk to you. And um, this is what the Lord has <clears throat> given to me, and I've uh, done it over the country. And um, I think that perhaps God has something in it for you. In the um, book of Jeremiah, we have so many different confrontations that uh, Jeremiah had with Zedekah, the king, and in that 37th chapter, when the battle was going against Zedekah, <clears throat> the Lord uh, delivered Jeremiah from prison through this man, Zedekah. <clears throat> and Zedekah whispered in the ear secretly of the king. And ask the king, is there a word from the Lord? I want to talk to you from that. Is there a word from the Lord? And can I tell you that this subject that the Lord uh, allowed me to deal with caused a deliverance to many people. And there are those of you who stood tonight and said that you wanted uh, to be blessed. You wanted to be delivered. Yeah. I want to talk to you about what to do when you don't know what to do. Well, uh, This message was born when... I received a call from California and um, the lady said to me that I'm calling you, this is my last call, because I'm looking for the tallest building 
and I'm going to end my life. And I wondered what was wrong. She said, listen, I've sunk to the lowest depth. My strength is gone. My energy is depleted. I'm frustrated. I'm baffled. And I'm discouraged. And the only way out for me is to go to the tallest building here in Los Angeles. And, and I'm going to jump. But I want to call you to just talk with you and let you know because I don't know what to do my back is against the wall and I don't know what to do I said talk to me tell me what's going on I was attempting to delay her and she said well my last son the one that I did the most for the one that I scrubbed the floors of kitchens to educate him. The that boy's arm is somewhat like a pin cushion. Nails and needles have been in his arm. There are tracks almost nearly everywhere. And that boy looked at me and said to me, Mama, you're no good. I, I don't like you. And that was the straw that apparently broke the back of the camel. And she said, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to end it all. And the Lord used me to talk with this young lady over the phone and somehow with prayer and meditation and a little bit of counseling I could do we hindered her from committing suicide and tonight as I talk she's still alive but it still baffles me that here is a woman was looking for me to tell her what to do when she did not know what to do some of you out there are looking at me and uh, you come face to face with those kinds of things. You mean I want to talk to me, but you have. Some of us have been in situations that we just did not know what to do. Zedeka was in that predicament in this 37th chapter of Jeremiah. Because there are things in our world that concerns us. And there are things in this world that you ought to be concerned about. There's crime everywhere. There is racism. I was reading the other day where there are walls that are going on. And for more than 150 years, there has been a wall going on somewhere. Nation rising up against nation. People against people. Class against class. Bishop and I were talking in the car today, not, not, not concerned about the outcome of the O.J. Simpson case, but Bishop said uh, to me, Chandler, isn't it something that a policeman, the one who is supposed to uphold the law, when they got the tapes and to find out that that kind of talk is being done, that uh, you're still being called uh, names that are not flattering, and there are times when uh, you just don't know what to do. I was born in the South and I was brought up in that segregated society which indoctrinated my mind with candid interpretations of an inferior philosophy stamped indelibly upon the retina of my mind. I was just about grown when I found out that Niggas come in any color. Right. 
that Martin Luther King was right. It's not the color of one's skin, but the content of one's character. I wish I could educate them to the validity of Joseph's coat. You all remember that coat? I really don't know why y'all won't talk to me. Well, I checked that coat out because I was upset with God about the way he, he was doing things. Have you ever got upset with God? Well, Jonah did. Jonah told the Lord in the fourth chapter of Jonah, Lord, I told you what to do before I left home. But you had to send me to Nineveh and let a whale swallow me. I wish you'd read that fourth chapter. God told him to go to Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. But it just, it wasn't because he was just a disobedient person. He didn't want to go to Nineveh because preachers were not welcome. They would take a preacher and dip him in tar and put feathers on him and burn him alive. And Jonah had heard about this. So Jonah said, now Lord, just go ahead on and forgive those folks. But when the Lord sent him and let a whale swallow it, Y'all excuse me for walking around. It's just that I'm getting some amens in this section and I just... Jonah went down and down in the ship, down in the whale, down in the bottom. And he went to Nineveh and preached and said, God going to kill all of y'all. And then he went on the top of the hill to wait for God to do it. And the people repented. And Jonah still wanted God to do it. And God told a worm, go eat that little bush down that's giving him shade. And when he ate the bush down, the sun beat up on him. And Jonah fell out with a stroke. And when he came to, he said, it's a shame. Look at that bush. It was alive this morning and now it's dead. God said, shame on you, Jonah. You have more compassion upon a bush than you have upon a whole nation. Man, let me tell you, if my people that are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves, yeah, you can get disgusted with God. And I got disgusted with God when I was reading about that. You see, this coat that Jonah had the multiplicitous color I checked it out more than 189 different colors in that coat that coat represented the, the different nationalities of the then known world but in order to prove to daddy that the boy was dead they dipped the coat in blood and then all of the different colors became one after it was dipped in the blood You see, I have the answer to the race problem. You see, the white man won't be white if you dip him in the blood. The black man won't be black if you dip him in the blood. All of us will become one if you can just get us to the blood. Now y'all sit down a minute, I want to talk to you. Well, I, I was disappointed, I really was disappointed in that story. Because it looked like God made a mistake. You know, the boy got up, he was taken down and sold, and ended up in Potiphar's house. And then after a while he ended up in jail. And then got out of jail. The baker and the butler, both of them forgot him. And folk, don't you, don't you fool yourself. Some of these folks that you do the most for, they'll forget you. You can pick them up from a frozen condition and put them in your bosom. And when they thaw out, they'll bite. 
eat your food and sleep in your bed and put your name on the highway. I told the Lord, Lord, there's a better way to tell this story. And God says, stay out of my business, preacher. But I said, Lord, there's a better way to tell it. And you ought to listen to me because my way, sometimes you think your way, get disgusted with God's way. Sometimes he seems a little slow. Look like he's squeezing you too much. That's why, that's why uh, David said it was good for me that I've been in trouble. And I thought that David had good sense. But he's talking about it was good for me that I've been in trouble. Nobody with good sense rejoice because of trouble. It's because we don't understand the nature of trouble. Sometimes God puts you flat on your back because then there's only one way to look and that's up. Sometimes God knock every prop from under you so you can lean on him. And then I told the Lord, Lord, let me let that boy go. His brothers have tied him up. Even my preachers have gone to sleep on me. My brothers have tied them, him up and put him down in a hole. And I've lost this section now. I've got to come over here. I'm going to another section here. He is down in the dungeon. And then in my sanctified imagination, I said, I'm going to let him go. And God said, stay out of my business. And I said, watch me, Lord. Watch me. I said, the way the story is told, a caravan was coming down a path leading down to Egypt. On a clear night, under the light of a crescent moon. And they took this boy and put him on the block and sold it. I said, but I want to let him go. God said, stay out of my business. I said, but watch here, Lord. Watch what happens. So I let the boy go. And when I let him go, I see him running 50 miles down the Dauphin and past Shasham to Heron, the homestead. He opens a tent, and there is an old man standing there with a bloody coat crying, saying, my son is dead. But when the boy comes in and says, Daddy, I'm not dead. And the old man and the boy hug and I tell God, look at me. Look what I've done. God said, wait a minute, son. Let me pull back the panoramic of history. Let me let 200 years go by. Then let me let a thousand years go by. If you let that boy go, there won't be no Jeremiah. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Michael, Nahum, Hebeka, Zephariah, Haggai. If you let that boy go, there won't be no Matthew, Mark, Luke, not John. If you let that boy go, there won't be any Bethlehem, no cross, no Garden of Gethsemane, no resurrection, no Pentecost, no Holy Ghost falling. Stay out of my business. Well, y'all sit down a minute. There comes. I don't get nothing from over here. I better come over here. Y'all forgive me when I walk around, I'm very tired. Look at Zadika here. He said, I don't know what to do, Lord, but my eyes are on you. We are losing the battle. And we are failing. And we are falling. Have you heard from God? Is there a word? I talked to my generals. I talked to my foot soldiers. They've knocked down the wall, and I understand they're only 10 miles from the kingdom. And, and, and all of my horsemen are gone. 
And Jeremiah, have you heard? Is there a word from the Lord? Well, we've heard from the generals. And here's what we heard from the generals. And it's not good because walls are not good. The words of Zerubbabel, the prophet, is vibrating and traveling upon the zephyrs of the wind, tiptoeing down through the valley. I hear him say, it is not by power. It is not by might, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts force can never succeed in a moral world I see a man bleeding on Calvary his name is Jesus but that bleeding man out there on Calvary is love out there on Calvary that is the epitomization of love walls will never do it strong nations will never do it Go over here where somebody will talk to me. Look like I got my crowd at last. If you will ask ancient Rome, Rome will tell you. Oh, yeah. Rome will tell you that uh, I was the strongest army in the world. But I forgot about one thing. Forgot about God's spirit. And did you not know that Spain followed Rome? And Spain was reduced to a second-rate power. And then England followed Spain. And boast that the sun never did go down upon her possession. And today, London is still recuperating from bombs sent over by Hitler during the war. Sherman fought for Abraham Lincoln and set fire from Savannah, Georgia to Richmond, Virginia. And he ended up by saying, war is hell. Jesus told Peter, I expect you better put up your sword. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Is there a word from the Lord? Thank you, choir. Because some people want to look to us. The church of God in Christ. They want to ask us, is there a word from the Lord? God knows. I, you know, I, I'm the presiding bishop, y'all. May not be it for long, but I'm it now. And since I'm it, I said in Memphis this year, I've called for a solemn assembly. This year, in Memphis, before the meeting began Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and all day Saturday, shut up in the temple three days and three nights fasting and praying somebody need to know what to do I found out folk that what Bishop James is doing this is the answer I'm not talking about I'm not talking about that old church of God in Christ that we are trying to get away from where you have people who are pompous, pious, sophisticated, sedate, sedate. You got big eyes and little you. Folk too dressed up to praise the Lord. And when you get that dressed up, you are too dressed up. When the Lord comes in. Y'all sit down. Is there a word? Church of God in Christ used to have it. Missionaries used to have it. 
I'm bishop, y'all, and in New Jersey, I don't let nobody be a missionary who just want to be a missionary. You don't need no license if you're not going to catch no fish. Being a missionary is more than having a big handkerchief to cover your rusted knees. Is there a word? Bishop, before I make them a missionary, before I let them be a missionary, I want to know what street corner have you stood on to hand out tracts? And what sick woman's house have you gone to and mop that dirty floor? cook dinner for those children how many nappy heads did you call I need ten folk to just leap up and holler glory I'll sit back down y'all sit down is there a word God is getting sick of false worship. Y'all ain't going to talk to me no more. God is getting sick of false worship. And lightning bug salvation. Light up at church and go out at home. Light up when somebody watching you. And go out in the dark. God wants you to light up and stay lit with Holy Ghost fire. Is there, is there a word from the Lord? Well, I'm going to meddle for a bit, minute, then I'm going to sit down. Because I really don't have no business up here. But there is a word for the Lord. I'm sick of racism. I'm glad in, in Memphis we had the white Pentecostals to come and the black Pentecostals to come and we all got together and said from now on there'll be no division but I've got to talk to the black male I got a word from the Lord particularly these youngsters I want you to let the barber quit cutting your name on the side of your head and I want you to take it from the side of your head and put it on a job application. <laughs> is there... Is there a word? Well, y'all gonna have to put me out anyhow. But your manhood is not determined by the notches on your sexual organ. Anybody can get a baby, but it takes a man to be a father. Thank you, choir. I need a little help. I need a little help. Work, work. Is there a word from the Lord? And black woman, you don't need to be liberated. You've always been liberated. On your knees, scrubbing Miss Ann's kitchen, you educated your children and made some of them lawyers and doctors but now stand up and be a woman if a man can pay two dollars to get a license for his dog then what is your problem
if he doesn't think enough of you to marry you tell him hit the door jack and don't come back no more is there is there a what from the lord Look, i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave but i've got to say it preachers who told y'all to shut up who told y'all to be silent who told you to keep quiet it's late in the game in fact it's 11:59, one minute to midnight and 60 seconds is not long and when god is looking for a trumpet a flute won't satisfy you got to cry loud lift up your voice If I don't be the presiding bishop, but one more day, I'm determined that the Church of God in Christ is not going to become Sissy's headquarters. Listen, I'm getting ready to go home, y'all. But if you don't know what it is to love a woman, you got a minute, let me tell you about it. God made woman for man. And made man for woman. Don't tell me you were born that way. Even if you were born that way, I got news for you. You can be born again. <laughs> is there... Is there a word? From the Lord. I am in the Church of God in Christ developing a program for homosexuals because God loves everybody. He loves homosexuals, but he doesn't love homosexuality. God can give you a new nature. I'm going to tell you this because y'all ain't ready for me now. I see some of your nose turned up now. Don't go outside on a rainy day, you'll drown. The truth will set you free. I was adopted. I'm not talking about biologically, but I was adopted by God. And if you got in here, you were adopted. One of the best friends I have is a Jew. He's just, he's my buddy. And he likes to play with me. And he's a channel of you black folk, y'all are demonstrative. You shout, you have inward felicity. You believe in just getting out there. And he said, but you know what? That's lot, that's good for your adopted children. Oh, he's only playing. He's my friend. But then I thought I'd play back with him. So I told him the next night, I said, you know what? I'm glad that I'm adopted. And then I jumped back and cut a little step. And he said, what you doing that for? I said, because if you're a child by birth, you don't know whether you were a slip up, an accident, or a mistake. But when you are adopted, it means God reaches over the crowd and picks out what he wants. I'm a royal child. Mm -hmm. Lord, I know.
Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is. And you know what it is? If I... Y'all got it here. You already got the secret. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. God ain't talking about the little rain out there. Talk about that's what you got here. The latter rain. And if I command the locals to devour the land, but if, I didn't hear it, I thought I had it here. If my people that are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. And I'll heal the land. Now listen, stand right where you are for a moment. I had you to stand at the beginning of this service if you wanted that blessing. And now it's time. And then I'm going to close this. It'll take me only one minute to close it. Now here it is. Oh my God. I've done it so many times and the Lord said, Boy, I'll do it again. Tell these folks so they can get delivered. And you stood and said you wanted it. Now here's, the, here, here's what to do. When you don't know what to do. Can I tell you? My wife had cancer. And of course the biopsy said yes, it's there. You know, major. And uh, this is what to do when you don't know what to do. All of the specialists said, well, you know, we, we, we won't bother with this one. But there is a guy named Islamic. He's the best in the East. But they told me up hand, you, you won't be able to get him. Because you're not a rocket fella. You're not an Esther. You're not a Donald Trump. You don't have that kind of money. You, you, you can't get him. Tell him, do you know where his office is? Yes, I went to his office, walked in, bold, and told him, the receptionist, tell Dr. Islamic that the bishop want to see him. <laughs> Doctor came out and looked at me, and I said, well, my wife is sick and uh, has cancer, and I want you. And he says, all right. When I went back to specialist. Look like they were laughing at him and said, what happened? I mean, did you, you went that show? I said, yes, I went. What happened? I said, here, take the case. They said, how did you do it? I said, well, I obeyed the Bible. I asked. <laughs> Somebody get ready for a miracle. They performed the operation, and then I heard the, all day just about. And I heard them calling for me. To come to the doctor's lounge and I went to the doctor's lounge and they told me said we're sorry we, we, we're sorry we had to give a radical mastectomy but the cancer had spread it and she, 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 she's, she's gonna die and the doctor said just hit the table and said oh that cancer ugly cancer she's gonna die told me when she was gonna die not the day but the month she cannot last beyond that month and I went to church what to do when you don't know what to do you know I'm almost getting ready to get happy y'all and when I went to church pacing up and down in my office like a caged animal just pacing the Lord said go in the chapel I went in the chapel nobody in that great big Wells Cathedral but me and I was down there on my knees and the Holy Ghost hit me and I fell out and began to just roll all on that floor by myself nobody but me just roll the spirit had me just rolling and then the Lord said get up and open that Bible that you've been preaching out of ever since you was a boy. And I opened it without looking at anything. I just opened it. He said, now look and read. And when I looked down, Lord have mercy. This is what I read. Behold, 
I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Is there anything Woo! too hard for God? Somebody get ready. Somebody get ready. Somebody got to repeat this with me. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh tumor flesh, high blood flesh, low blood flesh, cancer flesh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Let me tell you now what to do when you don't know what to do. I'm sitting there and the Lord said, go to thanking me because he hadn't healed her yet. And I said, thank, well, y'all forgive me because I feel the Lord, I know the Lord forgave me because I thank you for what? My wife is dying. And you, you, you telling me to just go to thanking you? The woman is in misery. The love of my life. And you telling me to thank you. And she's dying. And then I told him, I don't feel like thanking you. And he said, well, let me tell you something. That when you thank me. Now somebody going to miss it. But I hope you get it. Say, so when you thank me. It means you approve of whatever I do. <laughs> Woo! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God, now here's what to do when you don't know what to do. God said, if you can thank me for where you are, I'll move you to where you ought to be. That if you can thank me for the valley, I'll move you to the mountain. If you can thank me for being sick, I'll move you to being well. If you can thank me for being broke, I'll put bread on your table. Somebody get ready for a miracle. Lift those hands. Now listen to me. Hallelujah. God has just dropped it in my spirit. He's going to give us a miracle here tonight. I don't care if you don't have a job. I don't care if you're broke. I don't care if you're sick. Don't ask God for nothing. But I want you to just look up. Close your eyes. Look directly in the face of Jesus. And when I tell you, I want you to open your mouth as wide as you've ever done it and go to thanking him. And I want you to clap your hands as fast as you've ever done and just thank him like you've lost your mind. Do it now! Wait a minute. Just one minute, listen to me. One minute, listen to me. Lift that hand again. Now here comes your deliverance. Here is your deliverance. I want you to obey the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost says three. When I tell you I want you to throw your arm around three other persons and I want you to claim your deliverance. When you throw your arm around them, I want you to say as loudly as you can, 
Satan is a liar. I have my deliverance now and then leap for joy about four times and tumors will disappear. God's going to bless. Do it now. Throw your arm around somebody. Get out of there. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down now. Glory, 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 glory. Woohoo! Hey! Y'all sit down for a minute. I got something to tell you. Sit down. Y'all sit down a minute. I got something to tell you. for a minute y'all sit down for just one minute the Lord want me to tell you when you shout let me hear you say when I shout yeah you know when you shout you nag the devil to death because the devil can't understand why you are shouting and broke why you out there shouting and pains are in your body. Why are you out there shouting at victory and folk are lying on you? The devil doesn't understand it. You can shout your way to victory. You can shout your way to victory. Lift that right hand. Shake somebody's hand. Look them square in the eye if you can. Look them in the eye. If you're unable to say what I say, then don't feel bad. But say, neighbor, 
I don't know why you're sitting this quiet when victory is in the air. If I would tell you what the Lord has done for me, you would get up off of that seat and shout. Bishop preached tonight. Didn't he preach? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. I don't want you to start walking. We don't we don't walk in the rain. We Find your place and be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Overseer Borgen to help me for a minute or so. We're glad to have this wonderful. 